All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here. A little cold down here in the basement. Pretty cold out today. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this uh, piece of cherry, and we are going to make a cooking spoon. And I'm going to get my uh, templates set up, and I'll just briefly show how I set up the... Uh, the outline of the spoon. So let me get that stuff and I'll show you that in a second. Be right back. All right, I'm back. So um, all we're going to do is we're going to just simply draw a straight line uh, pretty much down the center of um, the billet here. I'm just going to kind of measure this out. Looking at so, just try to do it a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. This is all going to be uh, cut out several times. This is just a guide. And a lot of this is, uh, I feel, is uh, important to kind of having a fairly good spoon is the uh, layout of it. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just for me... And maybe this is helpful to you, you uh, guys and gals that are carving um, as, as, again, having just a template or a guide to uh, help you along the way. And if you guys haven't ever um, looked into these, this is the Spoon Design Kit by uh, Don Naltzi, Nalt I don't even know how to pronounce his name, <laughs> butchering his name. Um, these templates are great. Allows you to create um, eggs and egg-shaped bowls and different things like that. Uh, I'm just going to kind of lay this out. I'm not sure exactly um, what I'm going to do in terms of a spoon. If I'm going to have like a more traditional egg spoon. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to make it really wide. I really have no idea here if it's going to be a big egg, a, a kind of a normal size egg. I kind of I've done a bunch of those and of the normal size eggs, and those are kind of getting a little boring. And this um, billet is uh, 14 and a half inches long, and that's a, a pretty nice size uh, spoon if you're going to make something that big. Or have a spoon that big, so that's a really nice size cooking spoon. It might be a little shorter when uh, when we get done. We'll see. So I'm okay. I'm happy with this. Um, and so now, if I can find everything quickly, um, I can't. We will here. This back this up a little bit. So sorry. This is just to show you the. The guide here. We're just putting an egg in there, and this is just to kind of help me uh, pan this out a little bit. It's kind of dark down here today. What's going on? I don't know what's going on. Let's see how that looks there. That ain't that great. Oh my god, the lighting is horrible. The lighting is horrible. So I'm just going to eyeball it here. I'm just going to make that um, this little cut here. And that's going to allow me to build the, um, I guess, the crank in the spoon. You guys have probably seen this a thousand times from other spoon carvers as well. This isn't anything crazy. Making it a bit uh, deep enough. Not really sure how this spoon is going to turn out. I think that's, that's really deep. That is deep enough. All right, so we're just going to make that little slit there. As you can see, as you can't see, God, 
Maybe a little slit there. That's what we got. Cool. There we go. So now I'm going to use our trusty Hans Carlson axe here. We're going to get started. And we're basically just going to meet these two where we have it kind of like a V. And I've shown this before on my videos. Um, and I'll do a little bit of this chopping here. I think what I might do is I might move this light. Let me just do that real quick. Let me pause this and I'll be right back. I'm gonna see if I can fix the lighting in here. All right, I'm back. Hopefully this is a little better. I have no idea. My workspace is so messy right now. Chop this down. Some real punky parts here on this cherry. Probably not going to be able to use some of these parts. This gets a little finicky here. Gotta play with this. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Look at this. I'll probably um, clean this up with the uh, shave horse a little bit. I think that's good enough for right now to show you guys. Hopefully I'll show you this in a second here. So if you see that bend here, this is where the bowl is going to go, right inside of here, somewhere. But I'm going to clean, this is a kind of rough here to draw on for me. So I'm going to just smooth this out off camera with the draw knife and the shave horse to kind of make this a little bit better so that way I can draw on it a little bit better. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So here's what we have so far. Now that I look at it in the camera, it looks a little off. 
Wow, okay, maybe. It looks like this is over more. This, this line here should be over just a touch. So I can compensate. Definitely looks off. And that messes up, and I think that's the layout that I did here. It's kind of screwy. Uh, ah. It's funny how sometimes when you look at the things on camera, and this is just a really a rough thing anyway, this, this layout here. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny when you look at things on camera that things look different. I do that with Instagram sometimes. I look at a, a picture and um, and you see how things are kind of out of whack with your spoon sometimes. So it's not perfect here. This side here is like a little bit wider, I guess, than this side. Um, so uh, it's, it's going to be okay. I can always adjust it when I get down to the carving. Um, so anyway, so that's basically the, the premise here. It's going to have kind of like a scraper edge. Uh, I just kind of nipped off the little um, pointed egg part just to, again, add variety to the work. So now we're going to create the uh, stop cuts here, or relief cuts. We're going to put them in there with the saw. We're going to do that right now. And I just don't feel like stopping the uh, camera every two seconds to do the work. So you're going to see me kind of struggle through this here. My bandsaw, which I normally do this with, needs a uh, needs a new part, so should be coming some point soon. Ah. Oh man, it smells so good. Cherry. Oh my god. So those are the first two um, cuts. I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to do these two, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, we're back. I've successfully cut the stop cuts in there. Where's the accent. Uh, it's funny that um, sometimes you forget how hard, like the spoon carving is, when you do everything by hand. Uh, because normally I, t I do these relief cuts with my bandsaw, but the belt, uh, order um, like a cob belt uh, or a gear belt or something, whatever it is, that uh, helps drive the wheels to run the saw, run the saw uh, needs to be replaced. So I have those on order. But I normally just, I do that real quick with, quick with the bandsaw because when you're making a lot of spoons, it's just unnecessary to do stuff like that with a handsaw. Um, so... Yeah, but sometimes you got to do that. So now we're basically going to start shaping this and some pieces of this wood are not great. So I have to chop those out. And 
And just a quick note, if you've gotten this far in the video, we're already at like 15 minutes. Um, the Robin Wood axe that I initially was selling, I'm not going to sell it anymore. Um, I'm not going to make it available. No one's really interested in it. Um, and it turned out that when I was splitting a piece of wood, the wedge came out of the axe. I had to put a new wedge in. I put a metal wedge in on top of that. So I'm just going to use it kind of as like one of my beater axes, I guess. So um, just to let you guys know about that. Alright, let me just say a lot of work to be done on this thing, man. Wow. Mm. So we're just gonna start chopping away here. I'm not gonna show all the axe work, obviously. Just wanna show some of it. I know some of you guys uh, were interested in um, seeing the work with this axe. Um, but I know that's important, so you can see it perform. It's a great axe, this uh, Hans Carlson. It's a little lightweight, so it, it's not, um, you know, it's not heavy. So you do have to put a little bit more force, but in terms of a, uh, you know, carving axe, it's, it's great. But it's not like a power, a power chopper, I guess, if you, if you will. And normally, again, just to save time, what I actually have been doing a lot lately is I've just been cutting this out with the bandsaw and then kind of roughly shaping it with the axe. To do all of the spoons completely by hand, again, if you get into really serious um, carving, um, you know, again, I said this before, and I, I know I repeat myself a lot, but just to kind of drive things home, it's just not reasonable to sit there and carve every single spoon by hand. Now, if you can't afford a little bandsaw or something like that, then you have to. I get it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just kind of it's just kind of tough, you know. So I, I do, I have been doing a lot with the uh, bandsaw. Just to kind of chop off the sides and stuff, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, but yeah. So that's all I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to keep kind of hacking away at this thing to get a rough shape. And when we're down to the next uh, step of the process, then I'll, um, I'll show you where I'm at. All right, be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. So, whoa, moving on to a, a pretty tricky part of the spoon, which is, uh, I just call it behind the shoulders of the spoon here. And this is my interpretation of the technique. Um, I've seen people do this. I think I saw Woodsman's Finest do this, among others. And again, this is just my interpretation of it. It's a lot of material here. So I'm just going to do my best to show you how I do it. Go underneath a little bit just to remove so this is a This is a big spoon. I'm sure there's a, it's not the most safe thing in the world, but. Ah, that. Not the safest thing.
you're really removing of the spoon and how I look at it in sections, really, you know. That's too much there. So I'm just kind of removing underneath that part, and then I'm going to come back and same kind of angle, get rid of that. Normally I would do this with the bandsaw again, but I've been practicing this a little bit more and um, just trying to get more comfortable with the axe. And again, this is, this is really my interpretation of it. Not really. I'm just kind of hogging out material behind the, uh, the shoulders and stuff here. Really not the best doing it, but you could even take your, your hand saw and just cut those off too. Um, if you didn't feel like hacking away with the axe, or if you don't have, again, if you don't have a bandsaw. This is really so, so unsafe. <laughs> At least I think it is. see here. I'm not going to show all of this because I, I kind of fiddle with this a lot and I take a while. So I'm not going to show show every part of this but You could come in this way and do it too. It's probably a safer way. Just getting all that fat part out of there. So let me play with that a little bit. I'll just kind of show you what I did. This isn't, I'm still going to do some more work on this. But, whoops. That's what I did. This is still very rough. We're going to get rid of all of this with the axe. So I'll be right back when there's more done. All right, I'm back. Um, I didn't mention this the last time I was on the video here, um, on this video, but I put my um, apron on because I'm not wearing my uh, spoon carving clothes. Usually I have like, kind of like work clothes that I work in. And I don't care if I get them dirty, if uh, the knife has oil on it, I'll just wipe it off. So I had to put this on. Very, really helpful to have like some type of apron. Um, so right now, um, I'll show you. I did probably about as much as I'm going to do with the axe. Still very rough. But obviously we have all of this material here. And so now we're going to uh, use the axe and create a very uh, gentle upsweep in the handle. And that'll help with uh, when it's being used as a cooking spoon. So what, what I'm going to do is here's the neck here. We're going to try to leave a lot of this here. So, well, m not a lot of it, but this is where you want it to be the thickest, right, right down in here. So we're just going to kind of start here and work down, uh, work up or to the top of the handle. Very gentle. And don't be afraid to really chop away. Now, 
looks good. This axe, oh shit, this axe is really good. It really um, slices the way it, uh, it cuts. It's just really incredible. So I'm going to do a little bit of work right here, very gentle. And we're probably going to move on to the shave horse in a second. Got to get that set up. Hmm. Let me look at it. Okay. Not looking too bad. A little bit more ways to go here. Get a little bit back here. And I do get this question a lot. Um, uh, in terms of the, how long does it take me to make a spoon and for something like this, this honestly this is probably going to take me if I get crazy with it and, and get real uh, I don't think I have OCD but if I get OCD with it it's probably going to take about four hours I'm doing a basic uh, what I call paddle spoon which is like a real generic um, shape it actually I just trace a uh, bamboo spoon. That can probably take about an hour and a half to two hours. That's a very simple thing. There's no movement in the in the in the shape or anything. It's very simple. Still a lot of hard work, but so something like this again is probably going to take a few hours. Um, I'm not efficient, and you know I don't I don't do this for speed or anything like that. So. It's not why I carve. I don't carve to hurry up and get things done. It's not why I do it. I do it for the pleasure of, of carving and creating. It's kind of why I'm doing this. It's nothing to do with speed or time. So it really varies. Uh, it could take even six hours if, if I'm getting like really, uh, again, real finicky where I just want to I'm not satisfied with anything, it could take a while. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how it is for me. Take my time. I, I suppose I could practice speed and, and work on things. I've said this before in other videos, but I just don't do that. I don't practice that kind of stuff. You know, I'm just trying to make some cool spoons, basically. Without it. Wow, cool. We're getting getting some shape here, which is awesome. All right, let me look at this. All right, I'm going to play with this a little bit more, but I just want to show you. Let me just get, eh, this is good enough. Good enough for the video purposes. This is where we're at right now. We can see with my crappy camera work. So I did remove a lot. There's a lot more to go here, but this is where I want a lot of the, the neck. And that'll get a lot, we'll get fairly smaller or shorter, I guess, whatever. Um, but that's good. It's very easy to come up here and, and get this close. And I feel like that's too close because it won't be a very strong spoon. So um, let me uh, play with this a little bit more. Think about where I'm going to go with the direction of this. And I'll get the shave horse set up and I'll move the camera and all that kind of good stuff. And we'll go from there. Be right back. All right. So now we're at, we're going to be doing some shave horse work. I won't show too much of this just because the video is very long and 
I don't know. It's very long. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of, this is just really more refining work, really. Just kind of getting it down before I get to the knife work. My uh, draw knife isn't that sharp. I need to do some sharpening really on all of my tools. I might do that tomorrow. I don't know. Of course, I hate sharpening. And this part for me is I, I use a lot of the tools here. I use draw knife. I use a spoke shave, and I get in these little nooks and crannies. Again, you can do all of this with the knife. It's just a lot. You could maybe get closer with the axe, whatever you feel comfortable with. This, this part usually takes a while. Again, you could do it with a knife, but for me, it just uh, hurts after a while. Try to get really a beautiful wife just came on. So, yeah, but, all right, I'm downstairs. I'll be right up. to be done on here so be right back all right I'm back so before I get too far along I, I did a little bit more with the draw knife um, this all has to be shaped and and refined big time I'm gonna take the carving knife and I'm gonna basically get to the line um, to clean everything up I got as close as I feel comfortable with the draw knife and I'm going to go back to the draw knife eventually but this still uh, this thing still needs a lot of work um, so yeah we're just going to sit here and kind of hopefully you guys can see everything sit here and kind of play with this a little bit hopefully and hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing this is just pretty simple it's just all we're doing is just carving some of this right to the line that's all we're doing we're not getting crazy here. Just kind of shaping some of these parts so right now. Should be a pretty cool looking spoon when it's done. I don't want to get too crazy with the knife work right now. <clears throat> Getting distracted here. Just want to get some of that out of here. All right, cool. All right. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around these lines here. And um, we're almost ready to scoop out the bowl. And I do want to show a little bit of that work um, when we get there. So let me just uh, play with this for a while. Get this up and, like I said, up and close to the line here. And um, when we're ready for the next step, I'll show that. I'll be right back. Okay, back again. So I did a, a lot of the knife work here just to get around the edge very quickly um, so now we're going to work on the bowl and I think this spoon 
still a lot more to be done on this. I think it's going to have a, a be a pretty, not deep as a ladle, but I think it's going to be fairly deep. I think that's a pretty useful uh, shape, um, or not shape, but um, uh, let me just see what I'm trying to talk about here. I guess having kind of like a, a, a blunt edge and then a little bit of a scooping action and then a fairly deep bowl. We've been experimenting here at the house and that's actually a very um, uh, helpful cooking spoon, at least for the stuff that we make here at home. We make, again, a lot of stews, a lot of curry, a lot of stir fry uh, type of stuff. And um, having that uh, option of a, a fairly deep or a deeper bowl uh, is good, especially for like um, the, the stock pots and stuff like that. So I try to incorporate that, not all the time, but you know, in, in a bunch of the spoons, um, because that way you kind of have a spoon that not, not that it can do everything, but that can encompass a lot of things in cooking, you know, a little bit of scraping, uh, and also for sauteing. And then, then you have some, uh, scooping kind of action here. And that kind of goes into my whole thing of, um, of, um, knowing how the spoon is going to be used either before you make the spoon or, or while you're making it, having an intention, whoops, having an intention behind the spoon is going to help you um, with the carving. At least for me it does. So you see in no time at all, we make really great progress with the Tuca can here. great tool and every time I'm scooping every couple of scrapes I'm kind of feeling with my fingers uh, and approximating how, how deep I am and uh, it's gonna be a pretty big spoon here it's a pretty long spoon so I think that's a deserving of a pretty deep bowl, you know. Can't really go wrong with these when you make anything like this. It's it's really, and especially for me, what I'm thinking about is like selling the work too. When I do festivals or do art fairs, um, it'll speak to someone eventually. Somebody will uh, find use for it. Ah, hold it too. I want to go too deep here. I just feel that there. Cool. This is almost kind of like a ladle kind of thing too, in a, in a way. This thing. So I'm just going to continue doing this, and um, when there's more done, I'll, I'll uh, pop back up. 
at some point we're going to transition to some of the smaller spoon knives and kind of refine the bowl a little bit more. Still a lot more to be done on here as far as shaping the handle and everything, so we'll get to that uh, briefly. Um, so uh, I'll be right back. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. So I scooped out a good healthy portion of this. So right now I'm going to clean up the uh, bowl a little bit. I'm going to give this some kind of uh, swooping lines here and kind of play. I'll probably, a lot of times, I'll j I jump back and forth on different parts of the knife. I don't, I don't really have like a set thing like I'm going to work on only this part for the whole duration. Uh, I, I really kind of jump, jump around. So hopefully you guys can see a lot of this. All I'm doing is I'm just going to remove these pencil lines and then um, kind of give this like one plane of uh, action here. So it's not so choppy. This wood is pretty green. It's got a lot of moisture in there, which is awesome. There's a little bit of curl in there too, which also means it's going to be kind of hard to work. So this is kind of fighting me here. So I'm going to, I don't even know how much of this you can see. Got to get in some really funky positions here when you get into this stuff here a little bit. Uh, Oh yeah, it's like kind of fighting me. Um, cool. Here we go. It's not too bad. Always going to be a lot of work on these when you get to this point. So hard to film this stuff too. Let me just see what this looks like. Not too bad. This side, this side here looks better than this when I'm looking at it. Um, there we go. Let me just see here. Cool. That's good enough, I think. Um, Take these pencil lines off. And there's always going to be more refining as we go along. Let's get it here. All right, so I wanted to show that a little bit. And. I'm going to just keep playing with this, and I'm going to take off these pencil lines here, probably cut that off there, and when I'm uh, maybe back to something more interesting, I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. Cannot remember where I left off. I got so uh, engrossed in the carving that I kind of finished the spoon. Um, I'm not sure how this looks. So here it is. I'm not super thrilled with this side profile, but um, it's decent. Again, it's a cooking spoon, so it's going to definitely going to function. Um, it's pretty deep. It's got a you know a little scraper edge here. Um, thinned out the neck, and it's okay. I mean, you know. I decided to stop because every time I started messing with it, uh, the, the grain's got some curly grain in here, and that's kind of difficult to work. Um, but, um, you know, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, you know, it's a good little spoon here. 
feels good in the hand. Uh, I think overall I'm pretty satisfied with it. So thanks for tuning in. Um, try to get some more videos out and they'll be a lot shorter and a little bit more organized, I guess. Um, so thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys.